All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. I have two o'clock on my end. Hope you guys are having a good day so far. Welcome to Reed Park Zoo's online classroom. So my name is Kristen. You may have already seen Molly when she popped in a few minutes ago, and we're educators at Reed Park Zoo. I do want to let you know that we are recording this session. Your videos are not showing, but just to give you a heads up, this is going to be recorded. So if you have to leave the program early or if you'd like to watch it again or see any other programs that we have done, you can go to readparkzoo.org and look for our programs on our website. I also would like to point out that there's a chat feature available for this program. Only myself and Molly will see what you type into chat. But we are going to use chat during the program to um, both ask you guys questions that you can then answer in chat. And you can also ask your own questions in chat. And um, I will answer questions at the end of the program. So today we are learning about animal feet and what animal feet look like, why they're different, what we can learn from them. So my first question for you guys is, what is your favorite animal? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. What is your favorite animal? Ooh, a cat, a cheetah, a manatee, an elephant. Wow, these are all some great animals. A python, tiger. So these animals all look different from each other and they have different feet. Some, like the python, have no feet at all. But we're going to learn about what makes animal feet different. And one way <laughs> the animal have different feet is because they use their feet for different things. Now animals move from place to place. That could be to find food, water, shelter, to avoid predators, find a safe place for babies. All of those reasons make an animal move from one place to another. But animals don't all move in the same way. So some animals jump, some animals climb, some animals run. And that is why their feet tend to look different. So we'll learn about different animal feet and different features of feet that allow animals to move in different ways. First way that we're gonna look at um, moving is running. So animals that run a lot or move very quickly have some special features of their feet. One of which could be hooves. So we have a speaks gazelle and a zebra here on this slide. And if you look at the smaller pictures on the bottom, you can see the speaks hooves and the um, zebra's hooves. Now when an animal's walking on its hooves, it's actually walking on the very tips of its toes. And by walking on the very tips of your toes, it allows you to move faster because your feet aren't touching the ground for quite as long. Now it could be walking on a single toe like the zebra, or it could be walking on two toes like the gazelle. Another feature of running feet are padded feet. So you see the lion and the grizzly bear running there. And if you look at the pictures below, you'll see that they have paw pads. So they have cushioning on the outside of their paws that works like shock absorbers. So it's kind of like your favorite pair of tennis shoes and how those tennis shoes help to cushion your feet as you move. It also helps to protect your feet and even your legs. Now some animals though have cushion on the inside of their feet. So if you look at an elephant foot, which is the picture in the middle, it looks like a giant pancake, but the inside of their foot is very well cushioned. Now, if you look at the video, my video up at the top of the screen, I have an elephant foot model. So this is a model of the bones in the elephant foot and elephants actually spend their whole life walking on their tiptoes. So back here is the heel of the foot and they're walking on their tiptoes. But even though they spend all their time walking on their tiptoes, their feet are cushioned because an elephant could weigh 10,000 pounds. So that cushion is very important. This area here is full of fatty tissue and muscle that work like a cushion, just like your tennis shoes. So they also have very cushioned feet for running. Now there's another foot structure that I wanted to talk about, another type of foot that's very helpful for running. And that is an ostrich foot. So ostriches are the world's largest bird and they're so big they can't fly. They're too heavy to fly. So in order to get from one place to another, like get away from a lion, they have to be able to run very quickly. Now they only have two toes on their feet and their legs are very, very powerful. So think back to the hooves of the zebra or the gazelle. 
having less toes or um, a less, less of your feet touching the ground means that you can move faster. So ostriches have two toes, other birds have three or four toes. So ostriches have actually lost some of their toes in order to be able to run faster. Now, if you look at my video, I do have a model of an ostrich foot. You can see these two toes here. One is much longer than the other. This little toe here is more of a way for the ostrich to balance as it's running. But those nice long toes and in very powerful claws. Those claws help the ostrich to dig into the ground to get traction. So think about a soccer cleat. If you see people playing soccer or you've played soccer out on the grass, it can be kind of slippery. So these claws work kind of like the cleats on soccer cleats to help protect the ostrich from slipping. But running feet aren't always the best for swimming. So when you guys think of animals that swim, what animals do you think of? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. What animals do you think of when you think of animals that swim? You may have maybe seen one of them or a few of them at a park before, if you've been to a park with some water. Yeah, so ducks, swans, geese, flamingos, absolutely. A lot of times when people think of animals that swim, they think of birds like a swan or a duck or a flamingo. And those are animals that spend a lot of time in the water and they have very special feet to help them push their way through the water. They have webbed feet. So if you look at these birds feet, you can tell they already have more than two toes. They actually have four toes, three in the front and a tiny little one in the back. But those three toes in the front have webbing between them and that allows them to push their way through the water. But there are other types of animals that are excellent swimmers as well. And they also have webbed feet. So there's otters, alligators, capybara. If you've never heard of a capybara before, they're like a giant guinea pig, world's largest rodent. So imagine a large guinea pig who loves to swim. And some of these animals have feet that are fully webbed, kind of like a duck. So if you look at the otter feet um, picture on the left of the screen, they have webbing that goes pretty much to the tip of their toes. But alligators and capybaras have what we call partially webbed feet. So they have webbing that comes partway down their toes, still helps them push their way through the water. Now I have a question for you guys. Which foot do you think is better for running? We have the tiger paw on the left, which is letter A, and the duck foot on the right, which is letter B. So which one do you think would be more helpful for running? Ooh, very good, I'm seeing a bunch of A's. So that tiger paw does have the padding, just like that lion or grizzly bear that we talked about before. The duck foot doesn't have padding. It is webbed, so very good for swimming. If you've ever been to a park, you may have seen ducks walking on land. They sometimes try to run, but they're usually not very graceful, not very quick. They're much faster in the water. Now digging feet. Digging feet look different than both running feet and swimming feet. What do people use to dig? What do you guys think? What do people use to dig? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Sometimes people can use their fingers, but if you use your fingers to dig, you usually get dirt under your nails and it's not so fun. A shovel, that's right, we can use shovels. Now some animals have built-in shovels in the form of really strong claws. So we have a giant anteater on the left and a meerkat on the right. Those strong claws help them to dig, whether that's digging to get to food or digging to get to safety. Being able to dig is very helpful for these animals. Now that's a little bit different than jumping. Animals that jump don't always have really big claws or sharp claws. Animals that jump usually have large back feet and really powerful back legs, like this dart frog on the left, a kangaroo in the middle, or ringtail lemur on the right. Now there's another animal that has really strong legs and um, large back feet. Some have larger feet than others, and that's humans. So people can also be pretty good at jumping. They may not be able to jump quite as far as a kangaroo, but our feet and legs can help us to jump as well. 
Now, which foot do you guys think is better for digging? The lemur foot on the left, which is letter A, or the tortoise foot on the right, which is letter B? Which foot would be better for digging? Ooh, all right, so I'm seeing a mix of things. So the lemur has some nice, powerful legs. The leg is strong enough, they could probably dig just a little bit, um, but just like us, they'd probably not be as quick of diggers because they'd be using toes um, to help them dig. The tortoise foot on the right has very sharp claws, so it could probably dig a little bit faster, but a lemur might dig on occasion. We like to dig on occasion too. Now grasping. Grasping is when you grab onto something. So it's grabbing onto something. What do people use to grasp? What can humans use to help them grasp things? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Your hands, absolutely. We have wonderful hands to help us grasp. Now what things might we grasp? What might we grab onto maybe every single day? Think about what you've grabbed today already. So apple, very good, a doorknob, tools, a remote, if you like to watch Netflix. Yes, absolutely, we can grab all sorts of things. Animals will grab some of the same things. Animals don't usually grab things like remotes or door handles, but they may grab food, or they may grab branches or rocks for climbing. So some animals have very special feet for grasping things. One very special type of foot are feet that have fingers and thumbs. Now we think of hands, but animals usually um, have their feet that also work kind of like hands. So we have fingers and thumbs that help us grasp onto things, and so do other primates like monkeys, lemurs, and apes. So we have a lion-tailed macaque on the left, and then we have uh, lemurs in the middle. So a ring-tailed lemur grabbing onto that food, a tasty biscuit on the top, and the roughed lemur on the bottom holding onto that rope while grabbing a tasty leaf off of a branch. And then on the right, we have the roughed lemur climbing on the rope, but also a close-up of a lemur hand. Looks pretty similar to a human hand, also has four fingers and an opposable thumb, but it's furry, so that probably let you know it wasn't a human hand. And then I also have a model here this is a model of the hand bones of an ape, a special type of ape called a gibbon. This is a model, but just like us, four fingers, a thumb, and these bones have very long fingers. So if you're not sure where this is, the screen of my video up on the top is where I have the hand model of a gibbon. But these long fingers really help them grab onto branches as they move through the trees. Cloven feet is another really good type of foot for grasping. So we saw the Speaks gazelle feet up at the beginning with running, and they had two hoofed toes that were very close together. Cloven feet means split toes. So the goat toes are kind of like this, and that allows them to really grab onto things like rocks. You can see the goats at the zoo are showing off their rock climbing skills. And of course, they're relatives of mountain goats that are also excellent rock climbers. Sharp claws are also really helpful for climbing. The picture on the left shows a tamandua arm. So the tamandua is a type of anteater. It's called a lesser anteater because it's smaller, but they spend most of their time in the trees. So they use those claws to help pull themselves up into the trees. Claws can also be helpful for holding onto food. Even though the otter has webbed feet for swimming, the end of those webbed feet end in pretty sharp claws, and those claws help her to grab onto the food that she's munching on. And then we have an Andean bear and a grizzly bear on the right. The Andean bear is climbing down a tree. You can see her claws really dig in, and the grizzly bear is eating some of his favorite fruit, holding onto those using his claws. Now, long toes are another feature of grasping feet. A lot of times when people think of long toes, they think of birds. So birds have more than two toes, except for the ostrich. Ostriches only have two toes, but other birds have usually three or four toes. And with a lot of birds, two toes face backwards and two toes face forward. So that allows them to really grab onto things 
like branches, or in the case of the cockatoo on the middle picture, a peanut holding onto that shell as he's getting the peanut outside out with his beak. Now, some animals just have really unique feet. So they have special feet that aren't really like any other animal feet. An example of that is the dart frog, and another example is cave roach. So we'll zoom in on those feet. Dart frogs don't have webbed feet. A lot of times when people think of frogs, they think of frogs that spend a lot of time in the water. So they have webbed feet to help them swim. Dart frogs spend time in trees and in the foliage, so the bushes and leaves of, around the trees. They have very special feet that are flattened, flattened toes, and they can grab onto those trees and leaves kind of like suction cups. And the cave roach has very special spines on its feet and legs that allow it to hold on to branches in a very similar way. Works kind of like Velcro. Now, which foot do you guys think is better for grasping? The rhino foot on the left, which is letter A, or the macaque foot on the right, which is letter B? Rhino foot or macaque foot? Ooh, very good. So I see a lot of Bs, absolutely. Those long fingers, those fingers with an opposable thumb help them to grasp. The rhino foot on the left looks kind of similar to an elephant foot. It has that nice cushion. So rhinos are excellent at running, not so good at grabbing onto things. Now we can learn a lot from animal feet because animals use their feet in different ways. They tend to look a lot different. So on this slide, we have Andean bear prints on the left. In the middle is the giant anteater. So that's one front paw and one back paw. They look a lot different. And then the picture on the right is a rhea. That's a cousin to the ostrich, but it has three toes instead of two like the ostrich does. And I have a, um, another model here. If you look at the video up at the top, this is a lion footprint. So footprints are left behind if an animal steps on something soft, whether that's snow or dirt or mud. And this lion paw, this is what we call a track. So this is the track of the lion. And scientists can tell which animals live in a place by looking for tracks to show that an animal has visited, visited a specific area. So when we think of tracks, we often think of tracks left in the snow. For example, um, here's rabbit tracks left in the snow. But like I said, tracks can also be left in dirt and mud. We don't have a lot of snow around Tucson, but we certainly have dirt and certain times of the year, we certainly have mud. So there's deer tracks on the left and raccoon tracks on the right. Now you may be thinking to yourself, I've never seen animal tracks before. They must not be very common around where I live. But a lot of times we see tracks and we don't even realize it. For example, if you've ever been to a beach, you may have seen a track like this. This is a human track in the sand. If you saw this, you would know a person had been here. So it's the same thing that scientists learn by studying tracks. But tracks also tell a story, not just about what animal has been in a particular place, but also how those in animals interacted with each other, how they maybe were together, how they um, interact with each other in their habitat where they live. So here are two pictures. Both of these pictures have dog tracks and human tracks. So take a look at these pictures and I'd like you guys to try to see if you could get a story from these pictures. What story do you think these tracks tell? If you were a scientist and you saw these tracks, what would you think happened? You can choose one picture, both pictures, but go ahead and let me know in the chat what the story of these tracks are. And while you guys are typing that in, I'm gonna let you know what I thought of when I saw these pictures. So the picture on the left, the story that I heard that I thought of was a person walking their dog because the human tracks and the dog tracks both go the same direction and they're pretty close together. So they were probably walking together. Now that's a little bit different than the track, the picture on the right. Those tracks are going everywhere, every which way. So I think that maybe somebody was playing with their dog in that picture. So even tracks that are from the same two types of animals, whether people or dogs or cats or rabbits or deer, can tell different stories depending on how they are arranged. 
Yeah, I agree. It looks like a person was having fun. Absolutely. All right. So my challenge for you guys is to watch an animal either in your house or in your backyard or in your neighborhood. Look at what type of feet it has and how it's using those feet, what it's doing with them. You can also, next time you're out and about, if you see some dirt, look and see if you see any tracks in that dirt. What could you learn? What animal was there? Were there more than, was there more than one animal there? Were they interacting with each other? It's really interesting ways to learn about the animals that live in our neighborhood. Now, I would like to thank you guys so much for joining us. This is the uh, end of the presentation. I will answer questions in just a moment. But I do want to remind you guys to go to readparksuit.org to look at a schedule of upcoming classes and see recordings of previous classes. You can also connect with us at, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Um, just make sure that you get your parents' permission before you do that. So Molly, did we have any questions come in during the program? I didn't see any questions come in, Kristen. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody has any last minute ones to type in the chat. Otherwise, um, I think we're good to go. All right. So I'll give you guys a few moments if you have any burning questions. Ooh, I see one. What animal has the most feet? That is an excellent question. Um, so it's a type of arthropod called a myriapod, which is really fancy. Arthropods are kind of like bugs, they're animals that have an exoskeleton, a skeleton on the outside. And myriapods means many feet. Pod is feet, myria means a lot. So think about um, a millipede. Millipedes have a lot of feet. They have not a million feet, not a thousand feet, but they have a couple hundred feet. Could you imagine walking with a couple hundred feet on your body? That'd be pretty interesting. Um, what feet does a monkey have? So monkeys are primates. They have feet that look like ours. Four toes, for four fingers, and an opposable thumb. Now monkeys often have a thumb on their feet. So they have an opposable big toe. So imagine a big toe that you could move like this. That'd be pretty impressive. Um, it looks like there's a question about zoo opening. We do not know um, when we will be opening yet. We're making sure that we can open in a safe manner for our guests, our staff, the animals that we care for. So just check our Facebook or website um, for the most up-to-date information of when we can open. All right, guys, I think that's all the questions we have time for. If you come up with any other questions, you can email them to education at readparkzoo.org and we'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you have a great rest of your